Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned into the NFL on EA Sports. Anticipation is mounting for today's game, and we've got two quarterbacks looking to make an impact. It's Bortles' it's Jaguars going up against Marcus Mariota's Titans. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, Larry. We welcome everyone to the Music City, just a stone's throw from the Country Music Hall of Fame. We are at Nissan Stadium in Nashville, Tennessee. This crowd here fired up for football as a moment ago their Titans were introduced. This should be a good one as the Titans get set to match up with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hi again, everybody, alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and you know, now more than ever, it's a passing league. We know that, and as Larry hit onto the open, we've got a couple of great passers squaring off here this afternoon. And usually the discussion centers in on how they're going to compete against the opposite defense. But you and I had a nice little chat with one of these guys in this game, <laughs> and they did say, look, I'm always competing against the opposite quarterback. If I play better than he does, I think my team has an advantage. Makes the handshake afterwards a little sweeter, too. Ryan Suckup of the Titans has this one teed up, and we are underway from Nissan Stadium. That's fielded in the end zone. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. Offensively, here come the Jacksonville Jaguars and Blake Bortles. What a season for these guys. They're going to return to the playoffs for the first time in a decade. Double-digit wins, and that's after, what, the past six years, you had the stat. What were they the past six years? Yeah, we had to get Marvin to look this one up for us. 22 and 74 in the past six seasons. And look, I'm old enough to remember when they were a perennial, not just playoff threat, but very good in the playoffs. Went to two AFC championship games. So for them to be back in the playoffs for the first time in a decade, all is well in Jacksonville. Bortles now on first down. And the catch made here by Marquise Lee. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville and a first down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. So the offense has it first and 10. First rounder from LSU, it's Leonard Fournette. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. And the Buffet Boys, the O-line, hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. Now it's second and seven. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. Caught right side, it's Lewis. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Short of the sticks after that completion, and now it's third down for this offense. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Encroachment. So step off the five yards. Yeah, partner, you know, defensive end, he wants to get into the offensive backfield. He wants that get off to be as fast as possible. A little too quick on that one. Go, the offense lining up first and ten. Out 
After the penalty, it's Fournette. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. A look at the defensive starters for Tennessee. Outside linebacker Brian Arakpo got back to his Pro Bowl form in 2016, where he had double-digit sacks for the third time in his career, the first time since 2013. But don't think he's just a one-trick pony. He can also drop into coverage and take away some passing lanes as well. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Now Bortles. He'll set up the screen to Fournette. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. That'll wind up going for a loss of four. And that's going to lead to a third and 11. And that screen there on second down certainly didn't develop how they had hoped. Is that one they should have even tried, or is that one the quarterback sticks in his pocket? I think the latter. I like what you said there, because trying is one thing. We can second guess just about every call. But in this case, when you realize it is broken down, just throw it at the feet of your intended receiver so that no one can pick it off, right? You don't have the ball tipped up in the air, and you come back and try and pick up the first down on third down. That way you don't lose any yardage. Throwing his Bortles on third down. And that's complete to Lewis. First down, Jacksonville. The passing game looking sharp on this drive for the Jags. How about the start throwing the football? Four for four on this opening drive. Oh, he's slinging it. And oftentimes when you talk about slinging it, you're thinking about a guy throwing it all over the yard, not necessarily accurately. In this case, though, he's honing in on his targets, and he's delivering. Yeah, the opening script. However, they drew it up for this first drive, going to plan so far. And here comes play number six on this drive. First carry for Chris Ivory. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Tough running there. That's a hard earn four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. And they're six yards away from picking up the first here on second down. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Fournette. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. If you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism. They created some nice space for him. And this will be play number eight of the opening drive. It's third and short. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he's going to get the first down here as he's taken down at the 22. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. And Leonard Fournette impressing there with that run. It's hard to believe that no Jacksonville Jaguar has broken 1,000 yards since Maurice Jones drew in 2011. I think Leonard Fournette could be that guy. Even with the ankle injury last year at LSU, still averaged six and a half yards per carry. And absolutely intimidated opposing defenses. A lot of guys simply didn't want to tackle him. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They'll run it now out of the gun. And able to get about three as he's taken down right at the 20. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. So that'll back him up five. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. A 
Fake to Fournette. Now it's Bortles to throw. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. That would have been a great catch, but it was real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. 13th play now on the opening drive. Will this be the lucky one? It's third and goal. Here we go now. Three, 90. From the gun, it's Bortles. Over the middle, the connection to Hearns. And that time he's smothered as he's wrestled down. They'll get 11, but still a little short. Fourth down. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far in the opening drive. We always talk about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. So on fourth down, Doug Marone going to send out his field goal unit. Oh, they flip it to the kicker. He looks like he's going to throw it. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. Give him a gain of four, able to convert, and that sets up first and goal now. Did that totally surprise you after the meeting we had with the head coach this week? Well, he talked about being aggressive, but opening drive of the game to fake a field goal, that's very aggressive. Yeah, you're right. I'm probably trying to act like I knew a little bit more there. He caught me off guard as well, but looking back on it, he did tell us in our meeting he planned to be very aggressive in this game, and there's a terrific example of it. And the seemingly endless drive continues. Bortles to throw once more. He'll be ridden out of bounds. Didn't even come close to sniffing the end zone. He'll get only two there, and it's second and goal. Defensively, they better figure something out. Opening drive, he already has four catches. And if you have to figure out how to stop him defensively, that usually means you weaken your defense. That means that now the offense is doing the dictating, and they should have other things open up as well. Second down, here's Fournette. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Only a yard there, and that'll bring us to third and goal. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop ball right around the five here, brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick, throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. Bortles now on third and goal. And this is going to be caught. No, they say it's incomplete. Well, they took the shot, didn't get it. And there's definitely a difference here because they had a chance to get seven, maybe eight if they pushed it. Instead, they'll likely settle for three. Yeah, opening drive, holding him to three. Psychologically, maybe a win for the defense. So on fourth down, Doug Marone going to send out his field goal unit. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And Lambeau will put this one through. And the Jaguars grab a 3-0 lead. So it's our visitors who make the first dent in the scoreboard as they get three here on the initial drive of the ball game. Yeah, it's hard to say who actually won that opening drive. On the one hand, anytime you can come in as a road team and get an early lead, you're going to be thrilled. But at the same time, to have the ball as deep in enemy territory as they did and come away with only three, that's got to be a little bit of a disappointment. Now after the made field goal, back out Lambeau to kick this one off. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Tennessee Titans jogging onto the field. They'll be led by their quarterback, Marcus Mariota. Now, this is a group, Charles, and the Titans. They were rolling for a while. Winners of six to seven in the middle of the season. Then they had close losses at Arizona and San Fran. Kind of put a wrench in what they were hoping to do down the stretch. But focus on Mariota. Has it been the year that he had hoped for? No, not at all. Because I think most of us expect him to take the big jump here in year three as a starter in the NFL. He's had some injuries. 
that's taken away his mobility. He's had some leg injuries, and that's hurt him a little bit. But you just mentioned close losses to Arizona and San Francisco. Teams that are going to the playoffs should find ways to beat those two teams. All right, this is that type of a year. And Marcus Mariota said it himself. He has not played his best football. In fact, got frustrated and had a rough media encounter before mom called and said, you need to apologize. I did not raise you to be rude with the media. And that's exactly what he did. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step. And that's a big pickup right there on first down. Just one yard to go here on second down. Again, it's Murray. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey. On first down, Murray. And that one goes for about six as he's taken down just shy of the 45. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Now a first carry for Derrick Henry, and he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. And this whole line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They establish the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident. So following the run, we'll see what they do here on third down. To throw Mariota to the sideline. Wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. I think the training and practice broke down on that play because he simply didn't run the route deep enough to get to the first down marker, despite what was a really nice catch and toe tap on the sideline. Well, that's third down 101. You got to go to the marker, know where it is. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Bash. <laughs> Super tough. <tall. laughs> they go play action here on first down. Airing it out for Hearns. That's caught inside the 20. And he'll take it down deep into Tennessee territory. It's a big play for the Jaguars. 55 yards. Now that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see... The offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield. Those guys made that play possible. Portals now on the option left side. And yeah, maybe the wrong read there as he's going to go down immediately. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. So the myth has been shattered. 
every cornerback in the league is not just a cover corner. Some of them will stick their nose in there and make plays exactly as we just saw there. A big loss suffered by the offense after that nice tackle. Offense needs something here on second down. It is second and long. Fournette on the counter. Call it a gain of 13 yards on the play. And that'll make it third and one. Look, the first down marker is out there, but sometimes it's hard to find for an offense when they're in a long yardage situation, which usually means throw the football. In this case, they went against the tendency and ran it. And boy, the reward was there. A big, big pickup. And guess what? It's now third and very short in order to try and pick up a first down. And before they can run another play, the clock hits triple zeros. And time is up on the first quarter. 3 nothing is our score. We're back to Nashville right after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Alongside the former defensive back Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Jaguar football as we begin quarter number two. And they're driving, but they come up on a third and short here. It's a Jacksonville touchdown. Blake Bortles, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Jaguars had six to their lead. How about that touchdown, partner? If you blinked, you probably missed it. I looked away for just a second, and they were in the end zone. Josh Lambeau now for the point after. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip. So that drive, four plays, and it ends with a three-yard scoring run. Here's Lambeau out to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five as he's taken down right at the 20. Here's the Titan offense now as they make their way back onto the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, if something got, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. Here's Murray now as they run it to start the drive. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. 
First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Play fake to Murray. Now Mariota. And that one goes incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. And it is true. You can draft the fastest. You can draft the most athletic guys. But if they don't know the art of positioning, sometimes it's all for naught. In this case, in the right spot, help force the incompletion. Yeah, but had his hands on it for a second. Would have been a tough catch, though. Falls incomplete. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. They'll run here. It's Murray. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. I think I saw a lot of shoulders just drop there. And what I mean by that is they finally were able to relax a little bit because that was an important play call. They needed to pick up that first down at this stage of the game. Yeah, couldn't afford another quick drive and out. to Murray on first down. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. No gain on that run, and while this team is down, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you just have to think about different style of running in order to get this guy going. Second down, Mariota. And some room to roam now. It comes, and he lost the football. Mariota had it jarred loose. But it looked like the Titans were able to recover, and indeed, they will keep possession of the ball. A call it luck or skill, whatever the case is, they're feeling good about just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing that they're calling it now, our ball. <laughs> I mean, they don't care if it was luck or skill, but the panic that jumps up in your chest when that ball's on the ground, whether you get it or your teammate gets it, just as long as you maintain possession, that's all you're looking for. first down. How many times do we say in this game is speed kills and it does it in so many different ways. In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty. Can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed. Not just outrunning people in the secondary. And that led to a really nice game. They'll run it left side with Murray. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL, and that's speed. They want it at every position, and we just saw there some linebackers who can go sideline to sideline, run past that trash, go past people, and make tackles near the sidelines. And not only near the sideline, but also in the backfield there for the loss. That was second down run for Murray. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. No gain that time, but it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. 
Well, that was better than the first go around when he lost yardage, but still nothing there, and that sets up a third and long. Tough spot here. Put it mildly. Sometimes I wonder if some of that old school football should come back into play. You know what I would think here? Quick kick. Try and change field position. Help out your team. On third down, Mariota. And an alley to run. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. 13 yards is the pickup for Tennessee and a first down. Inside the 25 now at the 24. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And <laughs> what a really nice gain right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Mariota now on second down. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. The Titans on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Here's Mariota. Open man, it's Stocker. He needed a yard, that's what he got, and it's going to earn him a new set of downs. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. Now a give. This is Murray. And he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of a yard there. And now second down. Came out in a power set, but that only served to put more men in the box. And guess what? If you're going to do that, You've got to win up front, right? Your offensive guys have got to beat the defenders. They lost all leverage on that play. Now we've got movement up front. I think this is going to be on the Titans. False start, offense. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. to the penalty. It's Henry. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he'll be taken down just shy of the red zone at the 21. An eight-yard gain, so that gets him halfway there. Now they're left with a third and eight more. This drive is turning to an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. The Titans on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and eight. From the gun, Mariota. He's going to go up top for the end zone. So they took a shot there on third down. Couldn't get it. Now it's four. But that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, 
took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. Yeah, and on third down, maybe said, forget about the sticks. We want six. Here's Ryan Suckup for the Titan field goal. From the right hash, it's a 38-yard attempt. And Suckup will put this one right through. And they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to 3. I feel like we just ran a marathon. That was a long drive. They probably wanted six if they're going to go that many plays. And there were no checkpoints, no watering stations, nothing like that, right? Terrific job by the offense because not only did they possess the ball for that long, they wore down the defense. That could pay dividends later. Suck up now, set to kick it off, following the main field goal. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. The Jaguars' offense now heads back onto the field, and they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline, because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette, and he'll get this one up to the 26. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. again with Fournette and he's able to plow forward up to about the 29 just shy of the 30. It's a four yard pick up there and it leaves him with third and five. When you find that kind of yardage you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier and guess what you're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator I'd like to keep carrying it thank you. The Jaguars on third down they've converted three out of five thus far this will be third and five. Now Bortles. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. It's a tried-and-true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball, and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Norkman on to kick as he sends it away. <laughs> we'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And it'll be Titan football. The Titans offense now. They work their way back onto the field. And they had a long drive last time, but they had to settle for a field goal. And I'm sure that's how it felt to them, settling. They probably should have gotten in the end zone. Yeah, not out now, joy, right? Because that's what you get when you put the ball in the end zone. But there are benefits to that type of a long drive. Your defense gets a chance to take a break, adjust a little bit, maybe get themselves ready to get back out on the field and play a little bit better. So they'll take the benefit, even though they wanted the six points. Yeah, maybe wore down the other defense. We'll see. They begin the drive with a run by Murray. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, he's looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. Because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Now a second down throw for Mariota. He will find Davis on the left side complete. That one good for the completion percentage, but no gain. It'll be third down. 
Now the old pass completion for no gain, not something you want to call up out of the playbook too often. Yeah, most offensive coordinators don't have that on their play sheet, so they've got to go back and scramble after this one. But right now, with what they're telling receivers about making sure you take care of the ball in open field, sometimes the fighting for extra yardage doesn't come as a result. That and good tackling can lead to no yards gained. The Titans on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and eight. Working out of the gun, Mariota. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. It'll be a three-yard gain, and it'll be fourth down. Here's Brett Kern now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. the Jaguars offense as they get set to go again. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. They begin with a run by Fournette, and he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Well, you had to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. Two minutes to play here in the first half. Back to Tennessee after this. A reminder coming up at halftime, Larry Ridley will join us from Orlando with our halftime report, but business to take care of before that. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. Throwing his Bortles. Pressure comes, and the Titans able to bring him down. And yeah, the Titans going to signal for a timeout defensively. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Following the sack, third and long for Bortles and the Jags. Give running left is Ivory. Now another timeout here called by the Titans. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. Yeah. 
Here's Brad Nordman now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Titan offense now working their way back onto the field. The last couple of drives have ended in punts. Maybe the crowd minds that, but you're a defensive guy. You're okay with a couple of punt drives. Listen, I'm the guy that loves a 0-0 pitch game All right, in baseball. I can handle that going into the seventh inning. I think the crowd, though, they want to see a little bit more excitement. Let's see if someone can break something free on offense and get going. Offense at a premium the last two drives. A first down throw for Mariota. And they get to Mariota here as he's dropped on the sack. Calais Campbell able to collapse the pocket and drop it for a loss of three. Now, that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football. Led to a sack. And that's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. Shotgun. It's Mariota. And he's going to go down again. And now the Jags defense deciding to call a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Mariota will need a big play after the sack as the Titans come up third and long. Mariota hands to Henry. He finds some open field here. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. And now the Jags going to signal for another timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Here's Brett Kern now as he's on to punt for Tennessee. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Ooh, with a juke. Oh, and now he bowls him over. We'll call that a 49-yard punt with a return of just two. And the Jaguars go on offense first down and 10. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And I would say they went three and out last time, but actually they didn't even get to three and out. Still a strange decision to us here in the booth. Yeah, let's hope they don't go one and out, but maybe, possibly, let's try and try and think with them here. Try to play field position maybe, turn the ball over, put it in the hands of their defense. Who knows? You're a nice man. <laughs> forward to about the 27 yard line just a yard on the first down carry so it's second and nine 
That was a really nice play, be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got he's to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. And filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. On play action, now Bortles. And he's got the rookie, it's D.D. Westbrook. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. On first and ten, here's Bortles. Caught right side, it's Lewis. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. 20 yards on both of those plays back to back there. They are moving now. It's another first down. And he spikes it to stop the clock. And now if they choose, they'll have a chance at maybe a long field goal try here just before the break. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. He was true on his first. This a tough one from 49 yards away. I don't think this will even, nope, it doesn't even get there. Well short, so we've reached halftime here with the visiting Jaguars out on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando where Larry Ridley has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to the EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. Let's take a look back at the first half. The Titans trail at home at halftime. The Jaguars have looked good on the road and will just try to keep the ball rolling in the second half. So let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. First and 10. Here the catch is made way downfield, and he'll eventually be brought down, but not before getting to the 12-yard line. Sticking with the same try, Bortles going to look for space, and a quick three-play drive ends with the score. Taking the lead up to 10. Final seconds in the first half. Bortles connects with his rookie from Oklahoma, D.D. Westbrook. And he'll eventually be brought down, but not before getting to their own 47-yard line. That'll do it for us here at EA Sports Studios. Let's get back out to Brandon and Charles for the call of the second half. Brandon. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. Fielded about a yard deep. Get a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And the Titans getting set to go. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. Second half starts with a run by Murray. And room to run as he's up past the 35-yard line. And just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. 
And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Just two yards to go here on second down for the offense. They go with Murray again. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. One thing I do know about DeMarco Murray, he loves to pile up carries. You know, a lot of backs are concerned about how many they have. Not him. He wants the ball all the time. But so far in this game, that's not working too well, and his team's losing. He's had a decent chunk of carries. He just hasn't had much success when he's gotten those carries. The Titans on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This will be third and five. Mariota. And some room to work. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. 23 yards on the play. comes to the line now first and ten they'll run the counter with Murray and able to push his way forward here for a good little game and after getting tackled he's still down and looking very slow to get up we'll check on his status when we get back They'll try to throw now. Mariota had his hands on it, but dropped it. The rookie making a little bit of a rookie mistake. Third down. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. The Titans on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and four. Now Mariota. And some room to maneuver. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Yeah. 
Mariota gives to Henry. And he'll be brought down at about the 25 after a pickup of four. I don't care what the emphasis is in the NFL at any given time. Every defense is still going to say their number one goal every game is stop the run. And right now, they're not doing that. And that really chips away at your confidence. Second down following the run. They'll run it again with Henry. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be dropped at about the 11 after only a yard. The best defensive lineman they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands so they can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And brought down, but not before he was able to break the tackle and the extra effort moves the sticks. It's a gain of six as they're able to convert and now it's first and goal. And we were down on the field watching Henry warm up before the game. He's a big man. No wonder he breaks those tackles. And you remember what I told you when we were watching? It's not all pads. Yeah. When you get him out of pads and just see him in a regular suit or an outfit, he is a huge human being and a lot faster than what people know. When he gets rolling, he's a lot to bring down. Well, just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. They'll try to run it in with Murray. And he gets in. Touchdown, Tennessee. DeMarco Murray, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Titans are an extra point away from tying this thing up. Solid job up front. Really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in. That was well executed, wasn't it? Well blocked, well run. End result, six points. Touchdown. Ryan suck up on for the point after. And he'll put it through, and that evens us up at 10 apiece. So that drive, 12 plays in length. And DeMarco Murray, the one to finish it off with a touchdown run. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. To return it is Corey Grant. Oh, look at the juke. And he'll be stopped just shy of the 25 with a penalty marker down. Here's the call. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it.
They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. to Fournette, now it's Bortles to throw. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. That was a nice catch, but unable to stay in bounds. And remember, it wasn't a wide receiver who works on that all the time. I was going to say, he, he likes to get the ball handed to him. Now, don't get me wrong, he's part of the passing game as well, but maybe a little out of his comfort zone there. Yeah, he might want to have a few words to say to us about that later, but I am still going with you on that one. Wide receivers work on a little bit more. On third down, Fournette. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. I like the look that they just showed there. When you come out in a passing formation, spread things out a little bit, makes it really hard to cover the middle of the field, doesn't it? Because yeah. you've got to go out to the perimeter and cover those guys. Yep, exactly. Got some good blocking, too. Helped him pick up the first. Fresh set of downs here. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Three, three, 90, three, they keep it with Fournette on first down. And a big hit there as he runs into a brick wall near the 48-yard line. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And it'll be second and 12. I know they've got to be careful not to go to the well too often, but it's a fine line, isn't it? Because sometimes, if you've got success, you want to just keep pounding away. But no success there. They rallied quickly on the defensive end. And they're behind the sticks here a bit now, dealing with a second and 12. They'll give it up to Ivory. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. It's a loss of two, now third down. It's real easy to say this running game needs to be better, but the reality is they've been given little time to actually find a place to run the football. It's almost like the defense is there on the handoff. So first and second down went in the wrong direction. They'll try to do better here on third and 13. Here go, now. Three, 90. Three, 90. From the gun, it's Bortles. And he's got it to Hearns. That goes as a gain of 36 on third down. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. So here we go, first and 10 now. Into the red zone, it's Bortles. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked by Kevin Byard. Well, they thought they were going to break the tie. The defense had other plans. They were already in field goal range, but boom, an interception. I don't know if this was a case of being a little bit too greedy with the opportunity to put points on the board. But give credit to the guys on the defensive side. Hung in there, battled, and made a key play. And here comes Tennessee as they get sent to take the field. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. Carry 
Murray's piling up. It's Murray again. Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. But we stopped on that play. We said plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then, the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. And on second and ten now. A handoff. It's Murray. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll set up a third down. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. The Titans on third down. They're hitting at 60%, 6 out of 10 thus far. This will be third and five. Throwing is Mariota. They set up the screen for Henry. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. That's a first down pickup for Tennessee on a gain of 10. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sense that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. Play fake here on first down. And he finds a man with a crossing route. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. So the offense has it first and 10. They'll run it now out of the gun. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. And when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. A 20th carry coming up now for Murray. And after the good game last play, this time they say, uh-uh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Well, partner, I guess sometimes it's just a matter of philosophy. Some say run until they absolutely stop you, and others say, well, when you think they're about to stop you, fool them a little bit. I guess they should have tried to fool them on that play. The Titans on third down. Now they've converted seven times and could use another right now. This is third and seven. Now Mariota. And an alley to run. Well, he's taken down, but not before picking up the first, thanks to a flashy little spin move. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Nashville. 
Knotted up here at 10. That's our score as we begin quarter number four. And the offense lining up first and 10. Now we've got movement up front. I think this is going to be on the Titans. False start. Offense. So that one will be accepted. First and 15 here behind the chains. throw Mariota. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. Well, they tried to swing it out left into the flat. Complete, but really nice open field tackling. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their heels reacting to the play. No, they saw it, came right for it, and made a nice tackle for lost yardage. He's taken down at the 40. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. This offense, two for two on third downs on this drive. They're in for a tough test here, though. Third and long. Throwing. Mariota. Goes underneath for Henry. Gain of 21 yards. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. here on first down and they'll bring him down at the 13 yard line it's a gain of six on the play and that'll bring up second down First down, Mariota to Walker. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. A long drive here. Play 12 coming up for the offense. First down, Murray. And that'll get him halfway there as he takes it from the six to the three yard line. Well, Brandon, we always know that once you score one touchdown, you you're, want two. <laughs> you're without a doubt. And so far today, he's got one, but was denied as he tried to get the second one.
And this seemingly endless drive continues. They come out here in the eye. Now they'll run. Murray. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. On goal-to-goal -goal runs, when you create lost yardage plays, the only way that happens is either called pressure or what I like to call straight-ahead pursuit. A great read, and they get to the backfield and make the play. And that was a big chunk of yardage lost. So backed up to the six now. Third and goal. To throw is Mariota. His pass caught at the four. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Able to hold him to just two yards, and now it's fourth and goal. All right, field goal gets you the lead here. I mean, but I might want to just go ahead and go for something big. Oh, come on, you got to kick it. I mean, you got to be glad I'm not the head coach here, right? The whole team would want to revolt at this point. So some pressure now on the kicker, Ryan Suckup. This to break our fourth quarter tie. And Suckup will put this one right through. And they will take the lead at 13 to 10. So the drive here ends with a field goal, and that does give them the lead, but this one is still a long ways from over. And you love to be able to look up at the scoreboard and see that you're out in front, but then you take one look across the field and see that offense is raring to come back out, and you think, I don't know, the field goals are going to be enough to get us home. Suckup now set to kick it off following the main field goal. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And now out come the Jags. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he's able to get up here to the 26. It'll be a gain of four. And it'll be second down. Second down, here's Bortles. And his throw here is incomplete. Whenever I see a drop like that, I have to kind of take a step back and check myself a little bit. So used to seeing those big guys make big-time, spectacular plays that when they drop one, I have to remind myself, we ask a lot out of these guys. Block and catch the football, not easily done in today's NFL. The Jaguars on third down. Five out of nine thus far. This will be third and six. They give it to Ivory. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Call it a gain of five. Fourth down now. This team doesn't mind running the ball in any situation. And I thought he was going to get the first down the way the play developed. But the defense closed in and stopped him just about a yard short.
Here's Brad Nortman now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Out come the Titans now. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. A play fake to Murray. Now Mariota. Rashard Matthews here on the catch. And he'll be taken down just shy of the 40. And a nice gain of 21 yards. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for him there, didn't it? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They've got to go thank the guys on D. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. It's Murray. He'll get about three as he's brought down right around the 42. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. Again, it's Murray. And very little daylight there. He'll get a couple up to the 44. You can really tell right now both sides have amped up the aggressiveness. That time the offense winning the aggression battle. And the defense was obviously aiming for the football, maybe a little bit more so than the runner himself. And that's why he was able to break through and get the gain that he did. Mariota from the gun on third down. Room here to run. And he'll be brought down, but a tip of the cap on the spin move as that gives him a first down. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. They go play action. Mariota looking deep downfield here for Decker. So they took a shot on first down but couldn't connect. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. Offense still needing 10 yards, second down. From the gun, Mariota. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yarded. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. On 
third down, Mariota. And some space here. Avoids him at the 40. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. That one good for a pickup of 15 for Tennessee. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. They'll run it now out of the gun. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. Well, that play was doomed right from the start. They just about ran into every defender on that one, didn't he? It felt like everyone got a piece of that tackle. And the offense behind the chains here, a touch on second and 11. They'll run it now out of the gun. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain that time, and it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. And this is why the head coach gets paid the big bucks. Look at where they are in this situation, partner. Do you throw the ball here in a long-distance situation? Do you run it again and trust your defense and make sure you take care of the ball and punt it away? What kind of options do you have here, and what do you trust more on your team? Yeah, they may have just pushed him back into that throwing situation. We'll see. He dumps it off for Henry. And he's brought down, but not before reaching the 8-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. Long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So the Titans in possession of the football here as we get your reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. First down and goal. The offense knocking on the door. Here's Murray. And he will score. Touchdown, Titans. DeMarco Murray, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Titans are going to add on to their lead. Well, that was absolutely ideal for them, wasn't it? Trying to salt this game away. I think one of my kids just graduated in the amount of time <laughs> they had the football. That was absolutely impressive. Everybody wants those salt away the game drives. What makes them successful? Well, when you're able to mix run-pass, when you're able to control the football and stay ahead of the chains, I'm using every cliche I know, <laughs> but that's how you get it done because you're not taking negative plays, and that way you're able to run what you want to run when you get a chance to call it. So that one, a long 11-play drive, and DeMarco Murray, the one to finish it off with a touchdown run.
Now here's Suckup out to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And in hindsight, probably should have stayed where he was as he'll only get back to the 16-yard line. The Jaguars getting set to go. up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Bortles to throw. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As he'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. Following the sack, third and long for Bortles and the Jags. To throw his Bortles. And it falls incomplete after almost being intercepted. A pick there would have been great. The good news for the defense now, it's fourth down. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Now Bortles got to have this one. And that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And boy, possession here turns over with the football already being in the red zone. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. down to none? Yes, exactly right. The Titans offense now, they get set to head back out here. Getting down to the end here, they have a two-score lead, barely, but it's a two-score lead, so that probably makes you as a coach feel a lot more comfortable right now, doesn't it, Charles? It does, but it doesn't mean now you go out and run option or some kind of wild double reverse or anything like that. But you do know that if anything does go haywire, you're still in control of this game. I want a double reverse, don't you? <laughs> I'm just waiting for that day where we actually see something like that in this situation. We'll, we'll see what happens here. They'll run it now out of the gun. He will push his way down to about the 14. And now the Jags get a signal for another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They run with Murray. And the nimble footwork gets him just inside the 10 to the 9, but no further. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside.
The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. It's a gain of six as they're able to convert, and now it's first and goal. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? The old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. should be in. at each other right when he flinched. We knew that that flag was coming. Yeah, offsides, easy call, mark off the five, and keep it moving. Titans go victory formation down to a knee. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Titans are winners here as we say so long from Nashville.